All right, this example is over, um, first of all, we're going to write out the sample space of rolling two dice. So remember, a sample space is just listing out all the possible outcomes. So let's say you roll a blue die, like this one, and you roll the yellow die, like that one, and you want to list out all the possibilities. So a blue die, this blue die has numbers one through six on it, the yellow die has one through six on it, so you could get, this represents a one on the blue die and a one on the yellow, or a one on the blue, a two on the yellow which notice is considered different than a two on the blue and a one on the yellow. All right, so make sure you understand that, that a two on the blue and a one on the yellow is considered different than a one on the blue and a two on the yellow. Those are considered two different outcomes. That's why I have them written differently here, okay? On the other hand, a two on the blue and a two on the yellow is considered the same as a two on the yellow, a two on the blue. Those are considered the same outcome. I didn't have to move the dice, all right? So that's the reason I only have that written down once. So I'm, to complete the rest of this, a five on the blue and a three on the yellow would be written like this, five, three. A five on the blue and a four on the yellow would be five, four. And then five, 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 six. Here I have a six on the blue, one on the yellow. Six and a two, six and a three, six and a four. 6 and a 5, 6 and a 6. So that's called writing out the sample space for two dice, for only two dice. How many total outcomes do you see up here? Good. There's six. Six rows, six columns. Six times six. I get 36 total outcomes. So there's 36 outcomes in my sample space. So each ordered pair is an outcome, and the whole thing together is called the sample space. All right, if I want to figure out the probability of getting a sum of 12, I need to think about how many ways can I get a sum of 12 out of the total? So how many, how many ways do you see to get a sum of 12 up here? One. One way, right? Six and a six. It's the only way. So there's only one way to be successful in getting a sum of 12 out of 36 possible rows. So the probability of the sum of 12 would be one out of 36. A sum of six. If I want to get a sum of six. Look up here. How many ways are they going to get a sum of six? Ten. Five. I see one there. Five and a one. Just go diagonal. Two, three, four, five. This diagonal right here are all sums of six. So there's five ways to get a sum of six out of 36 total. So the five out of 36 would be a probability. Any questions about that? Okay. Sum greater than 10. How many ways are there to be a sum greater than 10? Three. Three, yeah. Right here, six plus five is 11. Five plus six is 11. Six plus six is 12. So those three ways give us sum greater than 10. These three ways equal 10, right? Four, six, five, five, six, four. So I wouldn't want to use those because it says greater than 10. So one, two, three out of 36, which of course you can reduce to 112 if you wanted to. Next one, a sum less than two. How many ways can you get a sum less than two? Four. Well, that's, that sums two. You know, any, are there any outcomes that are less than two? No, it's impossible, isn't it? So it'd be zero ways out of 36, which equals zero. Remember, when a probability is zero, that means it's impossible. That's what we have here. It's impossible to get a sum less than two. sum of 10 or less. Now remember, this was a sum of more than 10. There was three of them. So 10 or less, here's, these are sum of 10. The rest. The rest of them, right? So how many would that be? 33. Yeah, exactly. So if there are three ways to get great more than 10, or yes, greater than 10, there must be 33 ways to get 10 or less. So 33 over 36, which could reduce, divide it by 3, that would be 11 out of 12. These two events, getting a sum greater than 10 and getting a sum of 10 or less, there's a special name for events whose probabilities add up to 1. Right, because this is 3 out of 36 for this probability, plus 33 out of 36 for this probability, that adds up to 36 out of 36, which equals 1. 
When the two probabilities add up to one, what do we call these two events? Remember, they're blank events. Mutual or complementary. Complementary, yep. yep. When the two probabilities add up to one, like these two do here, those are called complementary events. And the probabilities always add up to one when you're doing complementary events. Um, another example might be uh, maybe the probability of me going to the prom and the probability of me not going to the prom. I'm either going to go or not going to go. The two probabilities would add up to one. All right. Last question I want to put on, on this video what you want to hear. If we rolled two dice, repeated the process 360,000 times, it would take you a long time with this. How many times should we expect to get a sum of two? Now, there's this law. It's called the law of large numbers that says that when you get a large number of trials, the empirical or experimental probability will get close to the theoretical probability. So in theory, in theory, according to this over here, how often should I get a sum of six? What's it say? Some probability, some, this, these probabilities are what we call theoretical probabilities. I didn't do any experiment. I just, in theory, figured out what should happen. 236 for 2. So I should, get, I should get a sum of 6. Oh, wait a second. Sum of 2. Sum of 2. Sorry, I was reading that wrong. How often should you get a sum of 2? What fraction of the time? 136. 136th of the time. Yep. One out of every 36 rolls, you should get a sum of 2. I don't have it up here, do I? OK. Well, here's my problem. Let's, let's figure out that probability then. Sum of, sum of two is one outcome out of 36, right? I thought I had it up here, but I didn't. So the probability of getting a sum of two is one possibility out of 36. If I do that 360,000 times, I take, figure out what's one out of 36 times 360,000 times. Or another way to think of it, if I get one sum of two out of 36 rolls, how many rolls, or how many sums of six out of 360,000? Let's say, let's say T. How many sums of two should I get out of 360,000? So you can either multiply here, or you can cross multiply and solve this. Or multiplying by one out of 36 would be the same as dividing by 36. So another way to do it would be this. 336,000. Divided by 36. Either way you look at it, anyone know what the answer is going to come out to? 10,000. Should be 10,000, correct. Yeah. Yeah. 10,000 times you would expect to get a sum of 2. Will it come out exactly 10,000? Probably not, but it would be very close to that. Okay, a lot of large numbers tells us that's going to happen. So let's go a little bit further. Um, how many times would you expect um, a sum of six? I want to figure that out. If I roll it 300, 360,000 times, I want to figure out how many times I would expect to get a sum of six. Take out times five over 36. Right. Our probability of sum of six is five out of 36. That's the theoretical probability. So you're going to take your theoretical probability times your total number of rolls, and that should come out to 50,000 times. I should get around 50,000 sums of six. All right. Will the results be perfect? No. But places like casinos bank on this working because they know if they've set their games up correctly, that and enough people come in and play their games, that the results are going to match up with it. You're very close to the theoretical probability, which means they're going to make lots of money. Turn this off.